I mean, fair enough, right? Like, we just got wrecked. What's going on guys? If you want to support our content and pick up this month's amazing Patreon rewards, you can do so at patreon.com slash it resolves. If you're interested in custom playmats and sleeves, visit yourplaymat.com and use code itresolves10yp for 10% off your entire purchase. What is going on everybody and welcome back to another gameplay video. Today I am very excited for uh, the deck that we have got on deck today. Uh, but before we jump into that, I just want to remind you, please subscribe, guys. It really does mean a lot to us. Uh, any and all support is greatly appreciated. But on top of that, we do have a giveaway going on right now for a free draft booster of the new Kamigawa set coming out in February. The winner will be chosen on February 23rd. I think that's a Wednesday. Uh, and so do keep that in mind. If you'd like to enter, subscribing is one way to do it. More information is on our website as well as here on YouTube. We do have a, a video about it as well. So please go check all that out. But Let's talk about today's deck, which is again brought to us by Total MTG, the same uh, creator that created yesterday's deck list. Thank you so much, Total MTG. I noticed you share a lot of your decks on Aether Hub, and I really appreciate that because I love your deck building. So very excited to be testing this out today, but it's Abzan Super Friends. Uh, so the idea is any kind of Super Friends deck obviously is going to be chock full of Planeswalkers, and this one is no different. We've got Kaya. Geist Hunter, a very interesting one. Creatures you control gain Death Touch until the end of the turn. <clears throat> Excuse me, put a 1-1 counter on up to one target creature token you control. Minus two until the end of the turn. If one or more tokens would be created under your control, put twice that many tokens instead. And then minus six, exile all cards from all graveyards, then create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token for, uh, with flying for each card exiled this way. That is insane to me. I think that is very, very good. Uh, we've got Soren the Mirthless, uh, a very, very good Planeswalker as well. Four mana, four loyalty, plus one. Look at the top card of your library. You can reveal that card and put it into your hand. If you do, you lose life equal to its mana value. So this is a nice way to kind of keep drawing cards, keep moving forward. Minus two, create a two, three black vampire creature token with flying and lifelink. And then minus seven, it deals 13 damage to any target and you gain 13 life. Absolutely. Uh, this, this to me seems like a perfect, just like, on theme black colored planeswalker it's perfect uh we do have excuse me uh lulf the spider queen a tried and true planeswalker we've seen for quite a while as well as ren and seven in the same kind of vein uh everything else here is uh, kind of control ish but creature ish focus it's a bit of an odd one so dig up obviously a nice little tutor for us we can get whatever we need if it's a basic land great if it's not we can cleave it out uh, Meat Hook Massacre are going to be able to sweep the board, which is great. Prosperous Innkeeper, though, going to be able to gain us some life for each of these creature tokens as they come into play. It also ramps us, which is good. Uh, Professor of Symbology gives us access to some very, very powerful lessons in the sideboard here, which is great. Uh, and just in general, a nice little 2-1 two for 2. Uh, welcoming Vampire, whenever one or more other creatures with power 2 or less enter the battlefield under your control, draw a card. This ability triggers only once each turn, so this is going to continuously draw us some, some cards, which is very good as well. Uh, Felidar Retreat, going to throw out some extra tokens for us. Edgar, another really powerful creature in this list, so other vampires you control get plus 1, plus 1, just good. But when it dies, return it to the battlefield transformed under its owner's control. As a legendary artifact, at the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 white and black vampire creature token with a lifelink, and then put a bloodline counter on the coffin. Then if there are three more blood three or more bloodline counters on it, remove them and then transform them back. So it's a nice like recurring kind of thing. You just continuously get it back, uh, which is really nice. Doomscar here with the Mihook Massacre for the sweepers. Storm the Festival to be able to get a bunch of permanents out very quickly. Just an absolute powerhouse card, obviously. And then Amiria's Call here is another kind of game ending style uh, slash land. Um, but all that to say, this is going to be an interesting one. I haven't tested this yet. We're going to try it together. Hopefully have a fun time with it. I love a good Super Friends deck, and this has token sub theme, so I'm super into it. But let's jump into game one right now. And here we are guys for game one. Again, I just wanna say a huge thank you to Total MTG who did share this list over on Aether Hub. This is not a great hand. Um, I feel like it might be worth keeping though. We've got the dig up so we can search for our second black source if we need to. Um, I'm just gonna lead with the farmland here. This might be a bad keep. I, uh, I truthfully don't know for sure. Let's go ahead and throw this out. Um, 
And I guess we can just pass. We really don't have to, to run the dig up quite yet. Uh, it would do some deck thinning work for us. That's a bit annoying, I suppose. Um, with that in mind, I think I will go ahead and dig up. Let's get that second. Oh, we don't have a second black source for free. Oh, no. Well, that's what comes from building the deck or knowing the deck. So uh, unfortunately, I didn't realize that, but that's OK. We'll figure it out. We're going to get in for a pretty good sized attack here, I would imagine. We would love like a sweeper. <laughs> Uh, we do have the Edgar that can come down here, which is kind of nice, but um, not the best thing in the world, but it is something. Uh, it's nice because it is just a 4-4, but they are going to be able to throw a counter here. Oh, they can just steal it. Wow, they are just running us. Uh, yeah. I mean, we can't do anything about it. They just have a, a good solid start here. Uh, and unfortunately, this alone sets us back a tremendous amount. Uh, the fact that this makes all of our Planeswalkers cost one extra is huge because obviously... Ow, oh, come on. Um, obviously, that's just a big hit for us. Uh, can they just win this turn? Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, they can. Uh, man. I mean, fair enough, right? Like, we just got wrecked. There's there's no way around that. That is totally fine. It's all good. That was just a bad start. Let's jump into game two now. All right, guys, game two right now. Let's see if we can do a little bit better. We didn't do so well that first game, but that is okay. This is actually a pretty good start. So we've got the Professor, which is going to help us uh, pull a lesson out as we need to. But then, of course, we've got Soren and the Asika's Chariot, both of which are very good options. So... Uh, I think we'll definitely keep this. Um, Asika's Chariot, not a card I mentioned, but it is a very strong card in this list for obvious reasons. We'll lead on the planes here. We don't have to make a decision on these quite yet. Uh, chances are, I guess we should go for the black on the uh, these pathways as, as best we can, uh, although that might change things. Um, all right, let's throw this out there. Um... I think it's just environmental sciences. It's not a super exciting play, of course, but this can get us our second green for the Renin 7, so we can continue putting these on the black side, so we've got Soren, uh, which I think is definitely worth it. Uh, we're just getting run by these uh, very annoying, hasty, like, very fast decks that we can't do a ton about, um, which is what it is. I mean, there's nothing we can do about it. They're gonna hit us for some damage for sure. Uh, less environmental sciences, I think, in a life. We'll just get this. Um, and we'll just play it out here. All right. Oh man, we are just not having a good time with these decks, are we? <laughs> uh, I mean, we can't do anything about it. We just have to push through, so it is what it is. Um, let's get Soren out there. Uh, we are going to spit out the life linker here just for the simple fact that we at least get um, a little bit out of that. Uh, that's scary. Showdown is terrifying. Uh, at the very least, though, they can't play anything this turn. Nope, they can. They can play the 10th Street Cadet. Sure. All right. Well, here's to hoping the Renin 7 token can do some work. <laughs> All right, um, we ha we might have to make a decision here based on how they attack. It looks like they're just gonna come in at us. That's gonna come in at Soren. I think that's okay. I think we just need to let this. That's gonna deal some damage to us. So we gotta get we gotta save ourselves as much damage as possible. I think at this point. Um, okay. Interesting. Um, can't do both. Oof. So we can play this, and that gives us two things, but that's not that great. Um, guys, I think we might just be dead again. <laughs> this is so unfortunate. Uh, this is a not... Oh, man, that was not what I meant to do. Well, all right. That was a mistake. It's fine, though. We're dead anyway. No. All right. Jump into game three. We got this. We need to not face an aggro deck, apparently. Or we just need a sweeper, but we're not getting them. So let's hope for better in game three. 
All right, guys, here we are for game number three, and this is at least a semi-ish better hand, so I'm gonna keep it. We're a little light on the lands, I know, but we've got a Doom Scar, <laughs> which apparently we have really needed, so I am very happy to see that. Uh, we're definitely just gonna go ahead and, um, I think we just throw the Doom Scar out, right? Like, let's just do this. The only trick is we don't have the second white source, uh, which is a little scary, but we do have Meat Hook Massacre here, and we do have the second black that we can play it. We also just have Dig Up, so we can just get the white source that way, I suppose. Um, okay, cool. Yeah, this this Doom Scar is gonna come in clutch, hopefully. <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and Dig Up. We'll get that basic land here. Uh, definitely just getting the planes. Throw you out there, and we'll pass, obviously. Um, now we can just Doom Scar. If they're smart, they don't play a creature this turn, I think. Um, which it looks like they're they're not going to, which is good for them. Um, we do have the Meat Hook Massacre, though, which is helpful. Ooh, Soren. Very good. All right, I mean, we just have to rip this. Just go for it. Get this stuff off the field here, and hope for the best. Uh, all right, we do have a black source in the deck, so let's do this. Uh, this guarantees the second black, which we'll need next turn for obvious reasons. Um, all right, cool. That's that. That's fine. I mean, we're down to twelve, which is a scary place to be, but we're not dead. Uh, which is better than the first two games. <laughs> Total MTG, I really appreciate your deck building. I have had bad luck with your decks. I am so sorry. Uh, I'm not putting on a good show for you. I apologize, but we'll see if we can get a win with this. I believe in us. All right, uh, are they just gonna transform it? Because that seems very good. Uh, alternatively, if they do just transform it... Okay, they didn't. Uh, interesting. So with that in mind, we can just kill that. I think it's just kind of worth it. Uh, it also sets up the Meat Hook Massacre, which is good. Yeah, I'll do that. We need it to, to gain some life here, <laughs> if nothing else. Um, and that is a very scary card on the flip side, so I think it's worth it to get that out of there. They don't play a creature this turn, or if they just play like a basic, yeah, like a simple thing like this, that's kind of okay. Uh, it's not great, but it's okay. All right, um, well, definitely play land. I think definitely play this. And then we've got options at this point, so. I think I wanna just get Soren going here. This just starts, again, attacking on a different axis, something that we talk about a good bit, but being able to hit with a planeswalker and a cre and multiple creatures like that kind of stuff that's very important uh and gaining the life here is very good so just finding ways to make that happen is i think very important now i understand this has menace so if they attack in we'd have to double block it if we choose to they may just have a kill spell in which case we can't um and so that's a risk we're taking here but crucially they attack soren they're not attacking us uh, and we do have ways to kind of work around that. So that's, woo, voice crack, that is fine. Uh, they do get the free attack in at Soren, but again, not killing us in the process, which is huge. <laughs> uh, next turn, we can drop the Welcoming Vampire plus a Sika's Chariot, uh, which would be quite good. Um, yep. All right. Uh, we do draw a card off of that, by the way. That's part of why that's so good. Which is about to be under control, yeah. All right. Ooh, uh, also a very good card, actually, um, that we can just play out. Uh, but I think we go this route first. Let's go ahead and drop the Welcoming Vampire. We get to see what we draw. So this is a really nice way of... Uh, we, we want to get some stuff out here to draw some, or gain some life and draw some cards. And so this is just a nice way to really, really bolster up our board next turn. Uh, this gives non-angel creatures we control indestructible. So it's a way of finishing off some of the uh, 
the game if we need to. All right, we did draw a Soren, another fantastic card. Um, I think I will attack in. We're not going to be blocking with this, uh, so every point of damage is going to be worth it. I'll go ahead and take that now. And again, as if they kill stuff, uh, they lose a life in that process. So this is all like just stacking damage as best we can uh, and hoping for the best here. So we will see. Uh, we will see. Soren is very, very good in my opinion. Um, and Amiria's Call. We've got some, again, total MTG. You packed this deck full of powerhouse stuff. Now that is terrifying. Uh, they don't have that many scary things to get back though. Oh, okay. Well, that's really terrifying. Okay. That's an interesting include in this list. I guess it makes sense. It's a kill spell slash a... Uh... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, I guess that makes sense. Oh. Um... Do we just meat hook for one, two, three, four, five, six? We just meat hook for six, right? That's definitely the play. Yeah, I think that's definitely the play. Let's do this. This is going to kill everything. Um, doesn't really matter which one we keep. I think that's definitely worth it. Um, our board presence was not great in that little exchange, so that makes sense. And I think we just hold on to this because we can uh, play it, use one of the tokens to activate the Asika's Chariot to copy one of the tokens. So I think that that's worth it. <laughs> uh, hmm. Interesting. Um, do we just Doom Scar? <laughs> I think we just Doom Scar. I can't deal with the six six. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I think that it's worth it just to do that. All right. I mean, it's the best thing we can do. Uh, I feel like this needs just some point and click removal, just like one or two pieces that we don't seem to be drawing or we don't seem to have at least. Um, all right, let's do this. This should be a very good turn. Um, let's activate the Asika's Chariot. It's gonna get an attack in here, which is going to copy one of the tokens. Perfect. All right, so now all of a sudden we just have a really solid board presence that they're gonna have to deal with. So. That's perfect. Uh, and there we go. We finally got a win. Oh, total MTG. I knew we could do it. All right, let's jump into a, a, a final game here. We got some time. It's only eight, like 19 minutes in, so let's give it one more shot. All right, guys, here we are. Wow, this is a terrible hand. Absolutely have to mulligan that. Um, this isn't much better. Oh, this is bad. We have to mulligan again. We can't play any of our hand. We just can't do it. Um, all right, I mean, this is a keep. It's not exactly a solid keep, but it's a keep. Uh, wow, that was rough. Definitely keeping. Need to throw a couple things back here, and I think it's these two. The high mana spells are the ones that we can't really get around at the moment. We do want Meat Hook Massacre. It looks like that's a good play because this is definitely going to be a problem for us. Um, all right, let's get the white source out. I'm going to go ahead and throw down the innkeeper. Uh, fully expecting it to die at some point, but I kind of want them to try to go for it here. A well-timed meat hook massacre could do wonders uh, against this list. So, hmm, that's not something we want to be dealing with. Uh, so we're going to have to figure that one out. Okay. And they didn't attack. Um, I think we meet Hook Massacre for two here. Uh, just gonna be honest, that seems like the right play. This little like tandem thing is terrifying. So let's get all that out of there. Uh, it also just again sets us up like it did last game with the Meat Hook Massacre being on the field is very relevant against these kinds of decks. So. Uh, any future sweepers that we draw are now much better than they would be otherwise. We also got a nice little two for one. Yes, we did lose our innkeeper, but that's fine. Um, the innkeeper kind of did its job by... Oh, that was interesting. <laughs> there was no need to do that. Um, all right, let's go there. 
Um, I'm gonna go for the slightly greedier play, which is the Welcoming Vampire first. The reason being, obviously, we might get a trigger off of it with the Professor of Symbology. If we don't, that's okay. Uh, it's not great, but it's fine. Um, and it looks like we're not. That's okay. Uh, it's unfortunate, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, we do have the Professor, though, that can still come down, and then, of course, we can get an Environmental Sciences, get our second land, or our next land, excuse me, not our second, uh, and push forward a little bit here. Wow, they are playing all kinds of out of order. Um, it's fine by me. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, let me see something really quick. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Um... Yeah, I think it's just environmental sciences here, guys. I'm not going to stress too much about it. Let's get you. Oh, actually, ooh, that was kind of a mistake. Um, let's get this going. Let's get second white. Um, I'm just trying to deck Finn a little bit. I guess we could have saved the dig up for, like, a sweeper, so maybe that was a mistake. But I should have gotten a planes off of the environmental sciences. That was definitely a mistake. Uh, for the potential Doom Scar. All right. Uh, yeah. Now I'm really wishing we had gotten the uh, uh, sequence that a lot better, but it's okay. We'll figure it out. Uh, we'll drop you. <sighs> um. I think we just dropped this down, but I don't love it. It gives them a target, but it also gives us an extra mana, which next turn, as an example, if we happen to draw, like, the uh, Amiria's Call, um, we would need that to play it. So I'd like to get that down now, because it just opens up options for us the next turn. I definitely misplayed. That was 100% a solvable problem, uh, that this turn we could have used Dig Up, gotten the, the sweeper that we needed, um, and then been able to sweep this board and they would have been stuck with only two cards left in hand so one card left in hand granted one of these yeah adeline god that would have been such a good play i can't believe i messed up that hard this is still annoying um that's not something we're gonna be able to deal with most likely <laughs> they they're not playing 100 percent well either though so i don't feel quite as bad um All right, um, I think we just take the kill. <clears throat> I'm all too happy to trade off there. I don't particularly care about that. All right, let's Professor. Um, I'm getting this so we can kill this now. I don't love it, but it is what it is. Um, all right, that Adeline is terrifying. That's why I'm taking that out because it deals so much damage um, and it's just a powerhouse card. So that's just something we have to do. Um, if they can't deal with the professor though, these creatures all get killed, but one of them is gonna get killed by the professor, excuse me. Um, I'm skeptical, very, very skeptical. All right, another Faceless Haven. Just means they don't have a play aside from just the attack this turn, which we knew they were going to attack, obviously. So that's, I mean, it is what it is. Attack with everything. Do it. Do it, do it, do it. <clears throat> yeah, I was going to say, they're being careful here. They're just attacking with this. Um, why didn't they attack with the Faceless Haven? I'm gonna say no blocks. I'll take three. That was weird. Um, I think they kind of messed up a little bit there. They continuously seem to be messing up. Um, so did we. Uh, arguably, we could have already not won, but we definitely would have been in a much better position. They would have basically just had the two faceless havens at this point. They're getting unlucky with their their land uh, off the top here as well. Yeah. Activate both Faceless Havens, that makes sense. Um, okay. Hmm. 
Hmm. I would love to take this thing out, but we just can't. Um, I would also love to take one of these out, but we'd have to double block. Um, hmm. And they could just two for one on that, which isn't exactly ideal. I think we just have to go this route. Uh, that was questionable, that block. Not 100% sure on that one. Um, Alright, well, Storm the Festival is a good card, but I don't think it's going to do it here. Yeah. Wow, this is unlucky as heck, isn't it? Um, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. We we just didn't get there. Uh, if we had gotten a Doom Scar off the top there, we could have just swept... I guess we still would have been in a bad position though, because they, they have the two faceless havens. I can't believe I misplayed that hard. We would have been in such a better spot if we had thought about that. All right. Yeah, I'm just gonna concede here, guys. All right, let's chat about this list. All right, so some obvious misplays for me, in particular on that last game, I think that was something we definitely could have at least bought ourselves an extra turn or two. Uh, and so I'm a little upset that we messed that up quite so hard, but it's okay, it's all good. We learn, we learn. Uh, Total MTG, thank you so much. Again, I just wanna say a huge thank you for, for sharing this list. Uh, Aether Hub is a great resource. By the way, guys, if you're looking for some good deck ideas, uh, some fun stuff there. There are tons of content creators and uh, and even just deck builders, not even YouTubers, that put their deck lists up there and allow anybody to share them. And so it's a really great resource for that kind of stuff. Um, and again, Total MTG, thank you so much for utilizing that as a resource because I really do appreciate it. But thank you guys for watching. It has been a trip. Uh, unfortunately, we didn't do very well with this list, but I do think there's something to it. I think Abzan Super Friends is a pretty cool idea. Uh, and I do think there's a lot of stuff there for it. So maybe it just needs some tinkering. Maybe I, I maybe I didn't play it correctly, which I definitely didn't in some cases, but regardless, it was fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. We do have our giveaway going on right now, guys. So it is really important that you subscribe now, but until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Thank you so much for watching.